I played a par three course this summer and got my first hole in one. Out of the nine holes, I got seven pars, one bogey, and one eagle, the hole in one. What was my total score after nine holes? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about adding integers. Okay, let's talk about that golf score. Now, if you don't know much about golf, this could be pretty difficult. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of those key words. First, uh, I played nine holes, right? And it was a par three course. Now, what that means is every hole was a par three. And what that means is you're expected to take three shots to get the ball in the hole. Um, if you take more than three, then you're over par. If you take less than three, that's good. That means you're getting it in less than you're expected to, which is good. You, you would be under par. So a par equals you're even. That means you're not above par, you're not below par, you're exactly what you were supposed to be. Uh, and we can represent that with an integer of zero. A bogey means you were one stroke or one hit over par. So one over, and we can represent that with a positive one or a plus one, okay, integer. Uh, if you were below par, so one below is called a birdie. That's one, uh, instead of below, in golf they say under. So I'll say you're one under par, which we would represent as a negative one. Uh, if you were two under, that's called an eagle. Uh, and in, in a par three, that would be a hole in one, two under par. Two under would be a negative two. If you remember, on my round, I had seven pars. Um, one hole in one. and one bogey. Okay. So the question is, what's my overall score relative to, to par? Well, seven pars, a par is even. It has a, a value of zero. So seven of them would still just be zero plus a hole in one. On a par three course, that means I got it in one shot, which is was pretty exciting, let me tell you. Uh, and that would be, on a par three, that would mean I got an eagle, technically. So that's two under. So I'm going to add a negative two. Okay. Then I had one bogey, which is one over. So I'm also going to add a plus, I'll just say, I don't need to put in parentheses, plus one. So my overall score for those nine holes, zero plus negative two is negative two, plus one. That's a positive one, gives me negative one. Okay. That means I was one under par for nine holes, which is not too bad. All right, today we're adding integers. Remember, integers are just could either be positive or negative whole numbers and also include zero. Zero is an integer, don't forget that. Uh, so our first example, we are adding integers with the same sign, integers that have the same sign. So either both of them are positive or both of them are negative. So our first example, negative two plus negative seven. Uh, there's a couple ways that we can think about that. Um, first, you could think of it as, well, I have two negatives, negative, negative. Um, maybe I'll put a little circle so it's easy. Plus seven more negatives. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Well, if I've got two negatives plus seven more negatives, how many negatives do I have? Uh, and two plus seven is nine. I've got nine negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So my answer is just negative nine. Okay. That's one way to think about it. Uh, but obviously that can kind of take a long time if you're going to draw that out. Um, but conceptually, hopefully that helps. Another way we can think of it as uh, if we use a number line. So if I draw a number line, I'm always going to start at zero. When I'm, when I'm uh, simplifying expressions and, and things like this, I'm going to start at zero. So here's zero. From there, I go to negative two first. So here's negative one, negative two. So I start at zero, and I move to negative two. Then from negative two, I'm going to add negative seven. So I'm adding that on to the end of it. Uh, so I'm going negative seven more. So that would be negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. I'm going to need a little bit more room. Negative 8 and negative 9. So I'm going 7 more, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I am at negative 9. Same thing, right? So this was the negative 2, that was the negative 7. So those are a couple ways uh, that you can kind of think conceptually about what's going on when we're adding two integers that have the same sign. Uh, but hopefully you'll start to realize all I really need to do is add the absolute value. So basically just add the digit, and then if, it was, if they were both negative, your answer is going to be negative. If they were both positive, your answer is going to be positive. Here's something to try on your own. Okay, before we get to the next example, we got to figure out something. So what is 6 plus a negative 6? Um, some of you might already know, but let's, let's kind of work through this to really uh, kind of get a better understanding. Uh, so if we, if we did, if we solve this problem the same as kind of what we did on the first example. I've got six positives. Notice these aren't the same sign. We've got a positive and a negative. So I could represent those six positives. One, two, three, four, five, six. With six pluses, plus for positive. Then I'm adding six negatives. So I'm going to write one, two, three, four, five, six. OK, those negatives. Well, what's going to happen with this positive and this negative is that they're going to cancel each other out. Okay, just like, uh, yeah, they become zero or cancel each other out. So I'm just going to kind of cross all those off. If they all cancel each other out, what am I left with? And hopefully you can realize you're left with zero. Okay, so six plus negative six is zero. Another way that we can think of it is with a number line again. If I start at zero, just like always, and I go up to six first, that's the first number I'm starting with. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then from there, I add a negative six. And negative, we're going to the left. So then, I'll use a different color, I'm going negative 6, so I'm going to the left, where am I? Back at 0 again, which is again why 6 plus negative 6 equals 0. Now, this has a name. Okay, This is called the additive inverse property. Okay. And the additive inverse property, you can see additive, which means we're adding integers. Inverse. Um, basically, you can think of that as the opposite. 
So additive inverse property just means that the sum of an integer and its inverse, and again, inverse, you can think of it as opposite. Right? The opposite of 6 is negative 6. Or the opposite of negative 6 is 6. Those are opposites. The sum, right? We're adding. That's why we say sum. The sum of an integer and its inverse or opposite is 0. Okay. So 12 plus negative 12 is 0. Uh, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Whenever you're adding opposites or the inverse, you're going to get a sum of zero. That's the additive inverse property. Let's try another example. All right, here's example two. Now we're adding integers with different signs. No longer do we have two integers that are either both positive or negative. Now we've got one of each. So negative three plus seven. Uh, again, we can still use the same strategy. We can solve this with, we've got negative three, that could be like negative Three negatives plus uh, seven positives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see that this negative and this positive would cancel each other out. This one, same thing, and same thing. And look what we have left. We have four positives left, which means negative three plus seven is four. Now, we could also solve this with a number line. Okay. Start at zero. I'm going to negative three first. So that's maybe negative, whoops. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Uh, and then I'm going positive seven plus positive 7. So going positive, I'm going to the right. So that's 3. Then I'm going to go 4 more. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so this was the negative 3, and this was the plus 7. So again, where did I end up? Positive 4. So again, those strategies can still work. Um, let's look at another one. Okay, part B, 37 plus negative 56. Now, we could do the same strategy, but to be honest, I don't want to write out 37 pluses and 56 negative signs and then cross things out. I don't want to really do a number line because that same thing would take forever. Um, so there's got to be another way that we could do this. And there is. When you are adding integers that have different signs, all you have to do is take the absolute value of the numbers. And we just we know what absolute value is. We just did that in the last video. Uh, and subtract them. Subtract the greater absolute value from the less absolute value. Okay, so absolute value of 37 is 37. Absolute value of negative 56 is 56. So 56 is greater, so I'm going to put that up top, and I'm going to subtract 37 from it. Okay, so I get 19. Now, this is the most important part. After you get your difference here, you have to look back at your original problem, and whichever number... Uh, whichever had the greater absolute value, that's the sign that you're going to use. So which one had the greater absolute value? The absolute value of this was 37. The absolute value of negative 56 is 56, which means this has the greater absolute value. It's negative, which means my answer is negative. So that's negative 19. And if you think logically, that should make sense, right? If you want to, if you want to do all those pluses and minuses, you'd have 37 plus marks, 
you'd have 56 negatives. So once you cancel out all of these, you're still going to have more negatives left over, which is why your answer is negative. Or same thing if you think logically with a number line. Uh, it would make sense that way. All right, this last one, negative 12 plus 12. Hopefully you notice that these are opposites, right? They're inverses of each other. Uh, and if you remember the additive inverse property, anytime you're adding opposites or adding inverses, your sum is going to be zero. So negative 12 plus 12 is zero. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.